Welcome to day two of MIPI DevCon 2020. We're glad to have you back. Feel free to interact with the presenters and attendees by using the engagement tools at the footer of your screen. Use Q&A to engage with the presenters and group chat to communicate with attendees. You can minimize and maximize each icon by simply clicking on each icon. To view the agenda and see the sessions and demos for today, click on the call to action icon. Enjoy the conference. Welcome to day two of MIPI DEFCON. I'm Justin, MIPI DEFCON Chair, and thanks for joining us again for another day full of great presentations and demos. I sure hope you learned a lot during yesterday's presentations. I know I did. And a big thank you again to our event sponsors, demo participants, speakers, and committee members. Without you, today would not be possible. Today's sessions will focus primarily on other MIPI use cases, including 5G, IoT, RFFE, and some others. The sessions will be broken up, similar to yesterday, by demos from our members. Today will run for four hours long, and we'll have a closing fireside chat to end today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speakers for the opening session today, Kevin Yee of the MIPI Marketing Steering Group, and Ian Smith, MIPI Technical Content Manager and author of the recently published IoT white paper, for the MIPI Alliance. Take it away, Kevin and Ian. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. I'm Ian Smith. I'm a technical specialist. I've just joined MIPI and uh, I've just authored a white paper for MIPI on IoT. Um, as mentioned, I'm joined by Kevin Yee from Samsung. Um, Kevin is the Director of IP and Ecosystem Marketing at Samsung Foundry. He's also Chair of the MIPI Marketing Steering Group. Um, so the purpose of this presentation is to give an overview of the recently published white paper entitled MIPI Alliance Enabling the IoT Opportunity. We split the presentation into two parts. First of all, Kevin's going to provide an overview of the I IoT opportunity and how MIPI Alliance is relevant in this space. I'll then provide a little bit of a deeper dive into the MIPI specifications and show how they support numerous IoT use cases. We're going to have a question and answer session at the end, so please feel free to submit your questions as we go through. Okay, so let's get started. Let me hand you over to Kevin. Thanks a lot, Ian. Appreciate it. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, as Ian said, we're gonna talk about Internet of Things. And we thought a good way to start is, what is the Internet of Things? The Internet of Things is a network of physical objects that contain embedded technology to communicate and sense or interact with their internal states and external environment. <laughs> Great technical definition, okay. Sounds like a Webster type of definition. I think more importantly is what do we think of when we think of Internet of Things? So we put together a little slide, kind of in plain English. What is IoT? What do you think of when you think of IoT? Well, for myself, the first thing that comes to mind is wearables. You know, things like Fitbit or Google Glasses or earbuds or things in your shoes, things, you know, the typical things, the first thing I think of when I think of IoT is wearables. Next, the other things might be your home or medical, your smart speakers, your uh, diabetes meter or something like that, uh, drones and cameras. Then you expand beyond that, and let's talk about really the smart cities and robotics, electronic arms, uh, surveillance cameras, street lights, those types of things. And then finally is one of the different areas that's really the larger 
industrial or agriculture, you know, where you have uh, parking meters and, and you go into shopping malls now and it tells you where the empty parking spots are or trams or uh, in agriculture is being used a lot. Those are kind of the things that I think of when I think of IoT today. And as we all know, IoT expands to so many different markets in different places, and we can't play in all of them. So part of what we're going to do is set the, the stage about what we're going to do, and that's what Ian and I are going to talk about, is where is it the best fit for what we can do and how we can help you. Now, we talked about how big the opportunity is. If we look at the forecast today in IoT for connections in 2025, it is gigantic. It is en enormous. We look at almost doubling in, in connections just in a matter of a decade. You see that Asia Pacific is driving things with expected uh, over 11 billion connections. And then you have North America and Europe quickly falling behind that. So I think there's no doubt that IoT is becoming a very big thing, especially with the way things are going. It's about collecting data. And IoT is the thing that really provides the devices that's going to let you collect a lot of that data that's going on. Okay. But where does MIPI really play in this? And as we, a lot of you know that MIPI is uh, the core comes from our mobile. And the values that we started with is really for the mobile space was about high bandwidth and high flexibility. Now everything's getting a lot faster. Okay. But at the same time, a lot of these devices in mobile as well as in IoT is about low power. A lot of them are battery operated. So power becomes a very big issue. And low EMI, there's a lot of data going on, uh, higher bandwidth, um, you want clean connections. So what we're doing right now is really leveraging the value of all that we've learned in mobile and using that for IoT today. So that's really what um, MIPI is trying to do, is take those learnings that we've done from the mobile and leverage them into value for IoT because a lot of them are very much related. With that said, what is the benefit? There are key things that IoT needs or wants to, to really grow. Part of that is about economies of scales and ownership. We, it has to be a low cost. It has to be something that can scale. You know, we're talking about lots of connections here. So you want something that's gonna scale in terms of size and in terms of connections, okay? We need to help try to reduce the design complexity. And Ian's gonna talk a lot about that in terms of design complexity, standardization, the interfaces to do that. With reducing design complexity, MIPI's put things in place to help software development, to put a, a framework in place, to help how you do software in addition to the hardware, to provide a complete system for IoT. And obviously, connectivity is a big thing. With the engagement of 5G rolling out, IoT becomes a bigger player in terms of how it rolls out with 5G. And then security. Uh, probably the last thing people think about and one of the most important things right now. So many themselves have started a security work group to start talking about this across all applications. So these are all things that, that maybe can benefit this IoT market. So with that said, the opportunity is great. We're gonna, Ian's gonna go into details about certain specifications and where it plays. In the consumer IoT, we know things like smart homes, consumer electronics and wearables that I talked about. But in the bigger place, the enterprise, industrial IoT, smart factories, smart cities, smart homes, the healthcare, the utilities, there's a lot of different areas in the enterprise. So this is just a small area of things that applications that are being driven right now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass this off to Ian, and he's going to talk specifically about where does MIPI play in these specific opportunities that we have in IoT. Take it away, Ian. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, so yeah, indeed, I'm going to go into a little bit of a deeper dive here. Everything I'm going to present is from the, the white paper. So. If you want to look into any more of this in more detail, then the, the white paper is the, the place to head, and obviously we'll give you the location of that at the end of the presentation. So let's just start um, and kick off with a question, just to make sure that the MIPI specs are relevant to, to your IoT device. Um, it's pretty easy to do this. You basically just need to ask yourself some simple questions. Um, Questions like, you know, does your IoT device require a sensor or actuator? 
Does it need a display, an embedded display? Does it need wireless communications? Um, does your device need a camera or advanced audio? Um, does it require a simple user interface? Um, is it a low power device? Um, is it a low EMI device? Does it uh, require reduced pin count so that you can create a very tightly integrated device? Need things like debug tools. Now for put any IoT device, um, I believe the answer is yes to many of these questions. Um, and because the answer is yes, you know, the MIFI specifications or many of the MIFI specifications are going to be highly relevant to you. So I really recommend that uh, if you're answering yes to any of these questions, you take a look at what MIFI has to offer. Now let me give a, a quick overview to, to whet the appetite. This uh, slide, I've just listed um, some example IoT devices uh, types just to validate uh, what I've said on the last page there. So here we've got a numerous different types of device spread across lots of different uh, sectors, you know, things like security cameras, smart doors, uh, connected washing machines, home hubs, et cetera, et cetera. And here I've just listed some basic uh, requirements uh, against those devices. And as you can see, you know, pretty much all of these devices require sensors. Uh, bulk of these devices also require things like actuators and controls. Many now have uh, uh, require integrated cameras. Many of them need a user interface, simple user interface, perhaps based on you know, uh, LEDs, dot metric displays, that kind of thing. Uh, but also many still require advanced displays using uh, advanced display panel, uh, advanced audio. And so one thing that is common across the whole board of these devices is requiring debug interfaces and debug techniques. So, you know, we really can validate that last point I just made that, that the IoT devices, you know, they have all of these common requirements and all these requirements can be met by um, using the MIPI uh, specifications. So let's just look into that in a little bit more de detail. We'll first start with this system diagram. Um, here we are all of the MIPI, uh, uh, all of the relevant MIPI interfaces and standards applied to a hypothetical IoT device. Uh, and you can see how many of the MIPI specs are, are relevant. Um, the interfaces shown here and the protocols shown here are flexible, low power, low EMI um, uh, uh, technologies that can be used to connect all the components that I like on the last slide. So just do a quick tour of the slide here. You can see we're using uh, MIPI Soundwire to connect audio devices. Uh, we've got cameras and displays being connected uh, using CSI and DSI protocols. Uh, touch uh, being enabled through MIPI Touch. Mass storage for the use of uh, universal flash. Uh, we've got debug interfaces provided by MIPI debug and trace uh, specifications. And I3C being used to connect a whole host of different sensors and actuators. We also have the uh, wireless communication subsystem, again, being connected via MIPI interfaces and protocols. And within the subsystem itself, you can see there are um, specialized MIPI protocols to control things like um, the RF front end uh, devices using RFFE. Also um, shown on this diagram are uh, the fact that we have both protocols and physical layers, uh, again, both spe specified by MIPI. And we also have um, debug uh, components, and we also have software components, an example being the HCI block um, shown inside the, uh, the host processor. And I'll come on to describe these in a little bit more detail. Let's first look at the protocol specifications. And we can look at how these are relevant uh, to the IoT device requirements. The so first up, we have Xi2, which is a, a specification that's widely implemented in uh, smartphones to connect uh, high-resolution cameras. So obviously, it can be used to connect cameras in IoT devices, but also it can be used to connect other high-speed sensors. Talking about things like LIDARs, radars, and other sensors that have very high, high bandwidth uh, demands. We have DSI2, which is used uh, protocol to connect uh, displays, again, used ubiquitously inside the mobile uh, handset smartphone arena, uh, and again, can be used to connect devices, uh, IoT devices to displays. The middle layer here, we have I3C, this is a general purpose, uh, low power, low pin count interface, ideal for connecting sensors, actuators, simple UI components. Um, things like simple dot metrics displays or simple still cameras, and also be used for inter-processor communication. 
uh, Soundwire, again, to connect audio components, uh, Bluetooth um, audio, but also can be used to connect other uh, sensors. Uh, we have MIPI Touch, um, for uh, you can be used in combination with uh, MIPI DSi, uh, provide a touch interface on top of a DSi compatible uh, display. And last but not least, we have Unipro, which is a high bandwidth protocol, uh, can be used for interprocessor communication, uh, but it's also commonly used to read and write to flash memory using Unifor flash storage. We also have the MIPI uh, physical layer specifications. Uh, MIPI standardized several physical layer specifications over um, the last few years. CFI and DFI are two uh, common physics used to connect cameras and displays. Again, ubiquitously used within the phone industry. Um, they're low cost, low power, um, have high bandwidth, and ideal for bursty data requirements. In the middle there, we have AFI. AFI is the most recently defined physical interface from MIPI. Um, it was uh, targeted towards the automotive industry and provides a long reach, a CERDES, um solution, providing high speed, low latency. The key thing is it's highly reliable interface uh, and can be in very harsh uh, EMI environments, like automotive environments, but obviously there are other IoT use cases also you know, require those type of capabilities, particularly IoT devices that are perhaps large, used in industrial situations, for example. And then last but not least, we have MFI, uh, short reach interface for real high speed data intensive applications. Um, use these to connect things like RF front ends uh, or connect flash memory. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the specifications, but now let's apply them to some use cases. First use look at is the smart city. And on this uh, smart city, I'll apply um, some typical devices that you might see in, in such a, an environment. Um, obviously, there are hundreds of devices I could choose for. This is just a, just a few to, uh, to, to sort of prove the point um, and prove how relevant the MIPI specs are. So first we have four devices here. We have a smart street light, environmental monitoring station, smart waste bin, um, smart parking sensors. These are all fairly simple devices um, and sort of key MIPI specifications to these devices will be specifications like I3C. Again, I3C provides this um, shared two-wire low-power interface. It's ideal for connecting sensors to the application processor. Um, it supports in-band interrupt um, to enable active deep sleep modes. Um, and what we can do with these interrupts is obviously you can just wait the application processor when the sensor has sensed a, a meaningful event. Um, so, you know, the car drives on top of the parking sensor, the sensor then wakes the application protocol to then send that information um, back, to, back to a server. So you can see that creates a very power uh, efficient solution. We also have RFFE, all of these devices in a smart city would typically connect wirelessly over a cellular network or a low power wide area network. And so RFFE is a, a, a MIPI standard that is used to drive RF front end components such as power amplifiers, load noise amplifiers, et cetera. Now, admittedly, in many um, IoT devices, you perhaps just buy, would buy an off the shelf you know, um, wireless connectivity module. But if you are looking to do a sort of fully integrated, integrated solution, integrate your own RF uh, components, then RFFE does, does come into play. We then have obviously more complicated devices in this uh, scenario. Um, let's take the example of a surveillance camera and a smart tram. Um, the camera obviously um, is an uh, image centric device. So CSI2 really comes into play uh, with these type of devices. Now, CSI2 is this highly scalable interface is to connect high resolution cameras. Uh, also has a command and control interface to allow you to uh, control the, the image sensor. And again, this can actually be implemented over a single physical interface using unified serial link. Uh, we also have um, uh, uh, standards like uh, Soundwire becoming applicable. Again, these cameras record video, sorry, video and audio. Uh, perhaps have built-in speakers to allow an operator to to talk to people in the in the smart city. Um, so using something like Soundwire to drive high-quality audio components, microphones, and speakers is is key. And also Soundwire can be used for uh, noise cancellation and uh, beam steering as audio devices as well. And then also we have a smart tram here. 
Uh, again, in the smart tram, you might be having displays and cameras and using CSI, DSI interfaces, but you may also have, require use of AFI. Again, these are large IoT devices, um, long cable runs, uh, harsh um, EMI environments. As AFI, although developed for the automotive industry, is highly relevant to also you know, these kind of applications, uh, particularly applications that require um, you know, safety, security, and very re reliable links. We also have, um, and it's applicable to all of these devices, the MIPI software and debug specification. I cover software first. Software, the MIPI is, is, is more and more providing software resources these days. Obviously, IoT, not just about the hardware devices, it's about the software these days as much as the hardware. So the more software tools that we can provide, you know, it makes life a lot easier for your, you know, you guys as, as IoT developers. Um, just to name a couple of uh, the software um, resources available today from MIPI, they have the disc discovery and configuration specifications or DISCO specifications um, already integrated into many Linux kernels. And these provide a basic framework for the discovery and configuration of many P protocols. We also have the I3C uh, HCI or host controller interface. And this is an open source implementation of a I3C master controller. And again, it's something you work into your design um, to get started and up and running with I3C quickly and easily. I'll come back to the debug um, specifications in a second. So let's switch tack here and look at a consumer example. Um, we can look at, uh, in this case, the smart home uh, as a consumer example. And again, just three devices here. And again, I could have picked from many, many different types of devices, but just three um, just to, to prove the point here. Firstly, you know, a smart home these days typically have smart home hubs. Um, and again, these are becoming ever more capable, um, typically integrating displays, cameras, audio um, today, flash memories, et cetera. So when we look at a home hub, obviously MIPI Soundwire comes into play to drive the codecs and provide the, the Bluetooth audio connectivity. Um, obviously, you know, sound's really important in these devices. You typically have six, eight microphones, um, you know, numerous speakers. So MIPI Soundwire is a really efficient um, mechanism to connect all those audio components. We obviously have DSI2 and CSI2 for connecting um, cameras uh, and displays. Um, I3C to connect any sensors or simple UI components that might be associated to the home hub device. Uh, again, universal flash storage if the the home hub stores you know, local multi multimedia uh, and needs some kind of large um, uh, media store. And again, RFFE is applicable in fact, to all these devices, again, if they're connected wirelessly, which in smart home today is becoming the connectivity of choice. Um, again, smart doors, um, you know, these, these, these devices um, becoming ever more uh, prevalent in the smart home again. Now, I3C is very applicable here for connecting perhaps a fingerprint sensor that might be on that smart uh, uh, door to act, you know, then um, it's just an actuate one lock and lock the door. Cameras are more and more commonly integrated. So it's again, CSI2 is really relevant. Sound wire again for audio and so forth. Um, then we have, you know, large home appliances. And I guess that the key thing to bring out there again is the use of AFI. You know, if you've got things like a, a washing machine, Again, these are physically quite large, um, you know, typically quite noisy from an uh, electromagnetic interference perspective. So using an, a highly reliable um, interface like AFI could be really relevant to these kind of home uh, uh, appliance uh, devices. And again, software and debug are relevant. Um, I covered software previously, so just to cover off debug, you know, MIPI Alliance has a a large suite of debug and trace interfaces that can be used to debug application processes, device controllers, power management devices, and many other types of component. Um, again, they use uh, the, the, the MIPI interfaces. So more recently uh, released has been the I3C for debug um, standard, uh, using the I3C interface to connect uh, debug tools to your device through, a, again, a, a very accessible interface. And the key thing about the, the MIPI debug specifications is they're all publicly available, very widely implemented by the test tool vendor community already. Okay, so I think that brings me pretty much to the end of my um, overview here. Um, again, I've gone through that really quickly. So again, if you wanna take a really closer look uh, at all the information presented, 
Uh, and there's much more detail in the paper. You know, feel free to go to the MIPI website and download a copy. Uh, it's freely available now um, and, and, and available. OK, I think that brings us towards the end of my presentation. Um, just one couple more points to make. Again, um, uh, here's a link to the white paper. There are a couple of other resources you might find interesting. Later on today, actually, during the DevCon, we're going to have a fireside chat. I've got some really good panelists on board, including myself and Kevin and a couple of other IoT experts. And uh, we're going to talk through some of the key challenges uh, in the IoT marketplace. Um, so if you're keen to find out more, please tune in later today for, the, uh, for that chat session. Uh, and then also, we have a, a blog post. Uh, again, this is something I recently published on the MIPI website. It talks about some of the dev kits that are available that support the MIPI interfaces already. So again, if you're looking to get your hands on with some of the MIPI specifications, some of those protocols that I just mentioned, take a look at the blog post, and you'll see that lots of commonly available dev kits already support those interfaces. You can get started today with them. OK, that brings me to the end of my part of the presentation. I think we can uh, look towards the Q&A. Thank you very much. Ian and Kevin, appreciate that. That was a great presentation. I encourage questions to come in from the audience via the Q&A pane. And I see the first question that has come in. Are all of the MIPI standards closed standards that require participation in the MIPI Alliance to access the physical layer specifications and implementation details? Yeah, the, um, very good question. Um, so um, there are more and more uh, MIPI specifications um, uh, becoming publicly available, and all specifications um, do require you to be a MIPI, MIPI member. Um, so the specifications that, that are in the public domain, I'm sure Kevin will, will be correct me if I, if I miss any, um, the I3C basic um, specification is a public domain specification. Um, we also have um, the HCI, host co I3C host controller interface, is a public uh, domain specification. Plus, I believe the vast majority of MIPI debug uh, specifications are also out uh, there in the public domain. Um, now that said, um, obviously that leaves a lot of uh, MIPI specs that require you to be a MIPI member, but I, I would urge you to look at the uh, MIPI website because you know, there are different tiers of membership available to make uh, those specifications as available as possible to the industry. Uh, the most uh, sort of basic level being an adopter level uh, membership, which uh, allows you to use the specifications um, and uh, you know use them in your, your designs. We then have beyond that a contributor level, which allows you to get uh, involved in the, the working groups that create the specifications. And there are also le levels above those to uh, become also a promoter or perhaps even a board board member. Um, obviously, we have a, a VIPI uh, membership uh, uh, director who would love to speak to you if you you know are interested in coming on board as a MIPI member. Um, Kevin, um, have, I, have I missed anything there that you'd like to add? No, just to say that, um, yeah, uh, MIPI has tried to make uh, specifications as available as, as much as possible, especially from the IoT, as mentioned, uh, I3C for sensors has been made uh, openly available. Uh, a lot of the, the debug specifications have been made available so that can be broadly used. Uh, the goal is to make it uh, readily available as much as possible. Yes, yeah, some of the specifications uh, require you to be MIPI members, but there is a lot of collateral, as uh, Ian shared toward the end, resources, that there are a variety of white papers, uh, uh, application notes, documents, that, uh, and presentations from uh, previous DevCons as well that talk a lot about the specifications. So we encourage you to, to look through the collateral and uh, for some of the specifications, uh, they are, are available uh, whether you're a MIPI member or not, but we encourage you to join MIPI and, and not only get access to the specifications, but uh, get involved in, in driving how this IoT market goes. Thanks Ian and Kevin, appreciate that. Next question I see, we hear terms like M2M, IoT, IIoT, and IOE, 
are they the same or what's the difference? That's uh, a very good good question. Um, I think all these the terms are slightly open to interpretation. Um, and certainly when I was writing the white paper, I did sort of look and check to see whether you know, any um, standard bodies or industry forums had actually managed to agree on some definitive definitions. Uh, uh, sadly, they, they haven't. Um, so it's slightly confusing um, that we have all these different terms. Um, and it is unlikely that we'll perhaps agree on a universal definition, uh, given that plenty have kind of tried that and, uh, and then moved on. Um, for me, um, IoT, or Internet of Things, and IOE, which is Internet of Everything, are kind of overarching terms for everything that um, encompasses, um, you know, it's, it's a term that encompasses everything that, that isn't a smartphone. So anything that's sort of connected uh, that isn't a smartphone fits under that sort of those generic terms. Um, I, IoT or industrial IoT is, is a term to focus more towards the industrial sector. And then you have things like end to end, which for me is a kind of legacy term for you know, uh, the days when machines were talking directly to other machines, probably not using it, perhaps an internet protocol, but some kind of proprietary protocol in those days. And end to end again, is probably more focused at use cases where there isn't a user interface or any kind of user interaction. So that's kind of my take on it. You may have a different view. Um, you know, there is no defined term, as I said. Um, Kevin, um, your take? Yeah, I, I guess my comment is, is to, to what you said, Ian, is correct. IoT is the overarching term. I think uh, in the desire, the industry has tried to, because IoT covers so much, as we shared earlier, that it's broad market, that people started uh, creating terms to try to focus it a little bit more and and to specify specific areas of IoT, like you said, industrials, IoT. So people are just kind of creating terms. I wouldn't get caught up so much in the terms, is uh, think more about the applications and what it's going to require, meaning is it sensors being connected? Do you have displays? Do you have audio? Uh, those types of things. And I think that will lead you better than, than worrying about uh, the various acronyms that are being created out there. But essentially, yes, they are all similar. Uh, but trying to specify specifically on, on subsets of the IoT market. Next question. How will the advent of 5G impact IoT? What is MIPI doing about it? Um, uh, let, me jump into, let me jump into this first. Actually, 5G, uh, especially because uh, we come from the mobile background, MIPI has spent a lot of time looking at 5G and believes that 5G is, is very important. And one of the big things about IoT is IoT is about connectivity. It's about uh, uh, this data center and collecting information. And we believe that because of IoT, uh, 5G and uh, a lot of the things that come with uh, 5G with, in terms of bandwidth, uh, um, IoT is going to really thrive in this new environment. As I, 5G rolls out, you're going to see that enabling more and more uh, IoT devices coming out there, how it gets connected, the narrow band, all of those things that get associated with 5G, it becomes the channel for IoT to uh, become adopted even more and connect to the Internet as, as IoT is. Um, so, so MIPI has spent a lot of time making sure that a lot of the specifications uh, not only fit into the IoT market, but also fits into the 5G market and making sure that we have connectivity for that. So a lot of uh, effort has been put in, especially in RFFE, the radio front end, to make sure that it addresses the 5G requirement. Uh, Ian, I'll let you answer anything in addition to that. Yeah, also to add, Kevin, I mean, there's a, a white paper um, that MIPI published, um, a readiness assessment of the MIPI specifications for 5G. That's worth a read. Um, I guess the only thing I'd add to the, about 5G is that, you know, 5G is an evolution. Uh, it's an evolution from 4G. Um, there's a lot to get started with um, using 4G, using low power wide area network technology, such as narrowband IoT and LTM. Uh, and then obviously 5G builds upon that. It, it allows ever to sensor device deployments, lower latencies, higher reliability. Um, I, I guess, you know, where 5G really comes to the fore in IoT is especially uh, useful for safety critical applications because you can adapt the, uh, the air interface um, to, to, to provide that, that extra um, capability. Um, so things like connected cars, industrial IoT, you know, 5G really does come, come to the fore. But like I say, there's, there's, there's nothing, no reason, no barrier really why you can't get started with 4G today. 
And we are actually out of time. I apologize for that. We do have some more questions coming in, but would like to thank Kevin and Ian for a great presentation and for those asking those questions and tuning in. Uh, I encourage you to look at the engagement hub and see what is coming up next for the sessions today. And we will move into a demo. Thanks again, Ian and Kevin. Appreciate that. Thanks, Deborah. Thank you.